When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man, that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that thou visited him? Are eclipses, are eclipses just coincidences, or are they signs from God? Whether they are or not, there is no way of proving either way. One thing we all can one thing we all can agree on is most of the world has turned from God. All right, so here's a lasting thought. Um, let's let's end on where the pastor right here says, "Are eclipses, are eclipses just coincidences, or are they signs from God?" Whether they are or are not, there is no way of proving either way. One thing we all can agree on is most of the world has turned from God. And I say a big amen to that. A big amen to that. So, um, yeah. That's pretty interesting about all the different things that are happening with the eclipses um, in this history that my friend Nancy sent me. So I'm just, again, it's about 6 o'clock a.m. on Monday, the 8th of April, 2024. Good morning, everybody. This is the morning of April the 8th, 2024. It's um, 10 minutes before 6 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm looking in my email this morning, and my dear, dear, precious friend, Nancy Blue, um, she's just a, an a adorable lady in the faith, um, in the saints of Jesus Christ. She talked to me on the phone last night um, about her sermon at church on Sunday, and the sermon was all about the eclipse that's supposed to happen today, this afternoon, and I believe for me, locally, um, um, in the path of, not the path of totality, but um, we're in the path where we're going to see the eclipse. Uh, and I think it's about to be, maybe about 2 or 3 o'clock Central Standard Time, I think. But she was telling me all about her sermon message about um, the eclipse. And so she sent me uh, her pastor's notes on the eclipse. And I wanted to... Uh, I thought it was worthy enough to put on our video since we are a Christian-based channel and we love the Lord Jesus Christ and we're not ashamed of who we are in Jesus Christ. Um, you take away Jesus from my life or Stephen's life and you have very empty souls. So I'm totally not ashamed of who we are in Christ and thank you, dear Nancy, for sharing this with me and... Uh, they are the sermon notes for April the 7th, and I wanted to talk to you about that. Um, so let's just kind of begin here with what her pastor started with Genesis. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be signs for signs and for seasons and for days and years. The Hebrew word for signs is Oth, which means a signal, literal or figurative, as a flag, beacon, monument, omen, prodigy, evidence, etc., mark, miracle, sign, token. Um, that's from the Hebrew dictionary. Omen means an occurrence supposed to be uh, portend or show the character of some future event. Any indication or action regarding a foreshadowing, a foreboding, a presage, and um, I don't even know that word, um, augury, um, I'm not sure, I'm not familiar with that word, and that's also from this dictionary here. The stars are signs in the sense of navigational indicators, and all through history, men have used the stars, to chart their courses around the globe. The earth revolves around the sun, and the moon revolves around the earth. Sometimes, the earth is between the sun and the moon. This is called a lunar eclipse, and occurs 
every six months. I didn't realize that. A lunar eclipse occurs every six months. I did not know that. A lunar eclipse is visible at night from anywhere on the Earth. Other times, the moon's orbit passes between the sun and the Earth, and this is called a solar eclipse. And I believe, obviously, that that is what we're going to experience today, this afternoon, April the 8th, 2024, a solar eclipse. And it occurs about every six months. What? What? I didn't... Well, I'm learning something because I didn't know the eclipses were so common. I'm, I'm learning something here, Nancy. Thank you. I thought that the solar eclipses were more unusual. Okay, I didn't realize that. A solar eclipse is visible during the day, but only in a narrow path, 60 to 120 miles wide, stretching a particular 8,000 mile long path, taking only three to five minutes to pass over any specific spot. I will pause to say right now that in 2017, when AJ was five and in kindergarten, we had what they called the Great American Eclipse in August. It was August of 2017, and that did come across Cerulean, Kentucky, which is where I'm at. And we were in the path of totality, so we got to experience that um, when AJ was five years old. Okay, now that was my note on that. How can the sun, which is so large, be blocked out by the moon, which is so small? The sun is 400 times larger than the moon. Didn't know that either. But it is 400 times further away from the earth. Hmm. This results in the coincidence that from the earth's perspective, from the earth's perspective, the sun and the moon appear the same size in the sky allowing the moon to block out the sun. Well, I'm just learning all kinds of interesting things from my friend Nancy's sermon notes. Okay, Amos from the King James Version, Amos 8, 9. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. At the time of Amos, the prophet Jonah was sent to the Assyrian capital of Nineveh. According to history, Nineveh had a temple. Nineveh had a temple to the pagan goddess Ishtar, with female prostitutes as well as male prostitutes dressed as females together with infant sacrifice. Well, now, hello, you have men dressed as women. Is that not transgenderism? An infant sacrifice? Is that not abortion? Let me read that again. Nineveh had a temple to the pagan goddess Ishtar with female prostitutes as well as male prostitutes dressed as females. Transgenderism together with infant sacrifice. According to some biblical historians at the time of Jonah's preaching, the solar eclipse prophesied by Amos took place June the 15th, 763 B.C. Now, that's interesting how they can pinpoint it to June 15th. I'm, I'm fascinated by that. According to history, there have been events that happened in coalition with eclipses. A 20th century coincidence, or is it a coincidence? A 20th century coincidence was after the Titanic sank in the Atlantic Ocean on April the 15th. Now, that's, uh, that's next week. This is, April, this is April 8th. So, next Monday is April the 15th. April the 15th, 1912. So, we're coming up on the anniversary of the Titanic. Um, April the 15th, 1912. Just 60 hours later, an eclipse passed over the exact path the ship took place. Well, you don't ever see that in the history books. I had no idea. 
On August the 21st, 1914, a solar eclipse divided Europe, the Ottoman Empire, and Russia. At this very spot, fighting um, started beginning World War I. So, World War I began with an eclipse? On August the 21st, oh, now that's interesting, look at that. August the 21st, 1914, August the 21st, 1933. Um, look at those two dates right there. On August the 21st, 1933, an eclipse passed over Jerusalem and Baghdad while Hitler and the Nazis rose to power in Germany leading up to World War II. Hmm, World War I? World War II. On July 9th, 1945, the U.S. government established the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. That day, a solar eclipse occurred, traveling from the U.S. to the USSR. All right, we're now on page two. A week later, July the 16th, 1945, the U.S. detonated the world's first atomic bomb at White Sands, beginning the nuclear arms race with the Soviet Union. On rare occasions, due to the Earth and Moon's cyclical orbits, the shadow of two, the shadow of two eclipses can cross the same place on the Earth within a period of seven years or less, which, if plotted, on a map would look like a giant X pattern. It is said that for a total solar eclipse to cross the same place twice. Now let's look at this together because this is what's going to happen today. A total, a total solar eclipse to cross the same place twice only happens once every 366 years. Since 1776, America has had only a few times when the past of the two eclipses crossed each other within a seven-year period, forming an X. Interestingly, the first letter, now this is just amazing, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph, some biblical scholars show it is as X, as X marks the spot. See, now there you go, X. Y'all heard that expression, X marks the spot. Because the letter looks like an X when printed. This adds to the speculation as to whether an eclipse is a sign from God. On June the 16th, 1806, the path of a solar eclipse crossed the entire American continent, passing over an area where the Ohio River and the Mississippi River meet in southern Missouri and Illinois and western Kentucky. Now, see, we're talking about where I live, western Kentucky. I live in western Kentucky, and I did know about this. This area is called the New Madrid Fault. Then, less than seven years later, on September the 17th, 1811, the path of another solar eclipse crossed that same new mattered area, making a giant X. Now, the, I, I remember studying this in school, when they used to teach things in school. The Mississippi River flowed backwards. Flowed backwards. The Mississippi River flowed backwards for a day, and earthquake tremors were felt as far away as New, uh, New York City, Boston, Montreal, Washington, D.C., and during this time, the Indian chief, Teku, um, Tecusma, sorry, I can't pronounce that, Tecusma, raised a coalition of Indians to join the British in fighting the Americans during the War of 1812. Okay, now check this out. This is uh, this is more recent. I, I just told you that in 2017 we experienced the eclipse here in Western Kentucky and Cerulean. Uh, I actually saw that one in totality, the one in 2017. Now check this out. The path of the 2017 eclipse 
And the 2024 eclipse, that's going to be today, folks, both cross Carbondale, Illinois, which is called Little Egypt. So Carbondale, Illinois' nickname is Little Egypt. It is said in 1831, Northern Illinois had a severe winter and an early fall freeze causing a food shortage. People traveled to the south to get food where there was plenty. Like unto Jacob taking his family to Egypt because of a food shortage. Caution must be used when observing these occurrences in the heavens. Astrology as, fo as a form of uh, divination is expressly ver forbidden in the scripture. Because so we're not supposed to... Uh, take the stars as divination but i mean it is quite interesting is it not um if carbon delta noise called little egypt and um there was a food shortage just like egypt in the bible but again there, um, the bible does caution us against divination there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination and or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. I'm not sure what that is. God specify God specify all right. Um God specifies astrologers as among those who will be burned as stubble in his judgment. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prog prognost prog prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them, and they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before.